السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوت الا باللہ العلی العظیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره We've been reflecting on the Quranic verses about the concept of Islam or actually the concepts of Islam because as we will see Islam has been used in different senses in the Quran uh, Alhamdulillah, we managed to uh, study those verses which relate to the Prophet Ibrahim and Islam in Surah Baqarah. Uh, now we want to move on and uh, study the verses which are in Surah Al Imran. We uh, start from verse 81. Of Surah Al Imran, chapter 3. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Wa idh akhadallahu misaqan nabiyyin. Lama ataytukum min kitabin wa hikmah. Thumma jaakum rasoolun musaddiqun lima ma'akum. La tu'minunna bihi wa la tansurunna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the fact that he has made a covenant with the prophets the prophets are those who have been given book and wisdom Allah says now that I have given you book and wisdom if a messenger comes to you that confirms what you have so confirms the book and the wisdom that you have you have to also support him. You have to accept him and support him. When Allah took this promise, made this covenant with the prophets, it seems to be general. So all the prophets were asked to be ready for such a thing that because I have given you book and wisdom. Now that I have given you the book and wisdom, if a messenger comes to you, perhaps the reason Allah says Ja'akum Rasul and doesn't say Ja'akum Nabiyun, because if it is not a Rasul, then he may not bring a new message. The whole uh, significance of this promise is when a new message comes, they should accept. Otherwise, if it's a prophet who is not Rasul, he just preaches the existing book. So there would not be that much needed, you know, to emphasize on confirming. As you know, we have had maybe 124,000 prophets according to some hadith but only 313 are Rasul. So if a Rasul, if someone who brings a book, a message, comes, who is musaddiqun lima ma'akum, although he has been given a message, but at the same time he confirms what you have. So it's not totally new. It's a new message, but in essence is the same and identical with your message you must believe in him you cannot reject him you cannot ignore him you have to believe in him neither rejection nor ignoring is accepted you have to believe in him and as a natural implication you have to help him when you believe in someone it's very natural that you have to help him and support him 
You cannot say, I believe in you, but I leave you alone. If you believe in someone to be a messenger of God, you have to help him. There is also Lam and there is Nuna Ta'akid for maximum emphasis. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قال أأقررتم So he made this covenant asked them to promise and after that he said are you happy with this? are you going to keep this promise? are you going to be loyal to this covenant? أأقررتم وأخذتم على ذلكم إسري are you going to be loyal to my promise? to my covenant? قالوا أقررنا. They said yes. We acknowledge this. We are committed to this. We are going to keep this promise. قال فشهدوا وأنا معكم من الشاهدين. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "You all must be witnesses." So all the prophets were witnessing this promise for themselves and for other prophets. So if, just for the sake of, you know, assumption, if we assume that there was one prophet who didn't keep this promise, all other prophets will be against him. Because they say we were all witnesses. So, فَشْعَدُوا All of you must be witnessing this. وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مَنَا الشَّاهِدِينَ I am also with you witnessing this. So we are all witnesses over this promise. فَمَنْ تَوَلَّى بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ If anyone after this turns away, ignores, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ These are the transgressors. Because they cannot say, we didn't know. Allah has already informed them, and they have already promised. So, if they don't keep this promise, it means that they don't want to be committed to this. Okay, this part is about the prophets. But I think at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the believers in those prophets also to keep this promise. Because someone may say, what relevance this has to us. This is something between Allah and the prophets. Whether they keep this or not, it doesn't have anything to do with us. But I think no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the communities who follow those prophets, the nations of those prophets, that this is the promise that your prophet has made. So if he is going to keep this, so you must definitely follow your prophet you also must believe in this prophet if the one who himself was chosen by God and received revelation he is asked to help this new prophet and messenger so the community definitely must do the same otherwise they are not believers in that prophet <laughs> وَلَهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ As you remember when we were talking about Surah Baqarah, those verses in Surah Baqarah, we said that Islam in the sense of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a general name. All divine prophets called people to believe in Islam and that is to submit to God. This is one religion. We don't have two different many religions. We have one religion and that is to submit to God. Allah says, أَفَغَيْرَ دِينَ اللَّهِ يَبْغُونَ Do they seek something other than the religion of God, other than Islam, other than submission to God? While everything in this world is submissive to God, 
So do you want to be different from the rest of the world? Everything in this universe is submissive to Allah. So do you want to be different? You say, no, I am not going to submit myself to God. So it's not a matter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the Quran or Prophet Isa and Injil and Prophet Musa and Torah. It's a matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to him. All the prophets came to ask for the same thing. In details, we can, you know, have always discussions. But this is the fundamental principle. Everyone who accepts to submit himself to God, we are very close to him. We are very close to the people who submit themselves to the will of God, no matter whether they call themselves Muslims, Christians, Jews, or whatever, as long as they have this principle. And if there is someone who doesn't believe in this principle, even he says, you know, I am your fellow Muslim, then we are very far. وَلَّهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is submissive. مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ Of course, as you know, man is normally used for intelligent beings. Normally, ma is general, and man is for intelligent beings. So, Everyone who has understanding, everyone who has intelligence, whether in, in the skies or on the earth, human beings, jinns, angels, whatever has understanding. And in a sense, we can say everything has understanding because everything is glorifying Allah and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes manfis samawat can mean mafis samawat. Means because everything from Allah's perspective has understanding. So all are submissive to Allah. Tawan wa karha. Our ulama normally, when they want to interpret Tawan wa karha, they say like this they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has generative will and legislative will. Al iradatu takwiniya and al iradatu tashriya. When it comes to his generative will or erada to takwiniya, everyone has to follow. Everyone has to accept. Whether they like it or not. Those who are not intelligent, of course, they don't have any decision to make. Those who are intelligent and have free will, they can make decision. But when it comes to generative will, they are also not able to make any decision. Whether they like it or not, they have. For example, whether you like or not, you have to die. You have to age, you become old, your hair becomes white, your physical power becomes less. You lose the people that you very much like. You lose the thing that you are attached to it. You become hungry, you become thirsty. You like it or not, this is going to happen. You may want rain to come, then it doesn't come. You may not want it to come, then it comes. It's not in your hand. So. Tawan wa karha. Whether you like it or not, this is going to happen when it comes to generative will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, with respect to legislative will, Allah has given human beings, jinns, ability to decide whether they want to follow his will or not. But when it comes to generative will, they have to do it. I have also another opinion. I believe that sometimes in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Taw'an wa karha, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, that He said to the sky, you know, you should come, Taw'an wa karha, they said, Atayna ta'i'in. Perhaps this Taw'an wa karha is an expression. It's like a proverb. Tawan wa karha. It doesn't mean literally whether you want it or you don't want it. It means that you have to do it definitely. Sometimes uh, these expressions can mean something more than the literal meaning. 
له اسلم من في السماوات والارض طوعا وكرها it means that they definitely submit themselves to God you know for example sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he knows whatever is in the skies and the earth I think whatever is in the skies and the earth means everywhere although literally we have places other than skies and the earth for example we have Malakut Malakut is not part of skies and the earth but when we say whatever is in the skies and the earth means everywhere whether it is in the physical world in the higher skies or even in the hidden side of Malakut they are all included in any case everything in these skies in these skies and the earth are submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ not إِلَيْهِ يَرْجَعُونَ إِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ they are made in the way that they have to return they definitely return to God يُرْجَعُونَ they are going to be sent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now what do you want to do? You have been given ability to decide. You have been given free will to decide. Do you want to make a decision which is different from the decision of everything in this world? Even our own decisions which are not a matter of morality, which is not a matter of voluntary decisions, again is the same. Even kuffar when it comes to their existential side, they are submissive to God. No kafir can change many things about himself, about his death, about his gender, about you know, health, many things. Even kuffar are submissive to God. So everything in this world is submissive to God. Even you yourself in many issues are submissive to God. Now when it comes to religion, you want to be different? You want to avoid submission to God? Do they seek anything other than the religion of God? Who is the one that everything in this world is submissive to Him and everything is sent back to Him? Yurja'oon is a passive verb. Now, based on this, what is our response? This is a general responsibility for all human beings. We are the community that we have chosen to respond to Allah by submission. قُلْ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ وَإِسْحَاقِ وَيَعْغُوبِ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ وَمَا أُوتِيَ مُوسَى وَعِيسَى وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ Very similar to the words that we had in Surah Baqarah. Tell them that we are the people who have chosen to be submissive to God. آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ We have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is interesting that although Iman is an ongoing quality but we don't say always sometimes we say but not always in a present tense we don't say no omeno billah we can say i'm not saying but not always sometimes we don't say no omeno billah we say amanna billah amana al rasul why because it seems that iman Although has to continue, but Iman is not repeating. A moment is not the one who every day believes in God. A moment is the one who believes in God once and keeps it. There are people that every day they decide to become a believer. It means that every day they have a doubt. Every day they say, okay, let me believe in God, see what happens tomorrow. 
But amanna billah means we have submitted ourselves to God and this is one decision for whole life. You know, there are decisions that you have to make and for the rest of your life you have to keep them. Not that every day you think about it and every day you doubt it. Amanna billah. We have believed in God, so this is going to remain forever. Amanna billah. Not no'mino billah. Again, uh, please don't misunderstand me. No'mino billah is not wrong, but I'm saying that the point in using past tense is that this is very much established. Amanna billah. This is why, you know, when we have uh, aqd, when we recite the formula for purchase or for marriage or for things similar to that, we use past tense because we want to establish something. When I say bi'to or ishtarayto or zawajto, means this is something that I have decided to happen and it has happened forever unless something new comes. I don't need to repeat this every day. We don't need to say again and again, Zawajto, Zawajto, Zawajto. You say it once and you keep loyal to this. This is a long term commitment. Amanna billah. Wama unzila alayna. Wama unzila ala Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq and so on and so forth. We believe in whatever is sent by God to us, but at the same time we believe in whatever God has sent to other prophets. It doesn't make any difference because we are believing in this prophet or that prophet according to Allah's will. For me, it's not making difference who has received this message. Whether he is speaking my language or not, he is from my you know, community or not, or he is not Arab, it doesn't make any difference for me. Is he from Bani Israel or is not from Bani Israel? It doesn't make difference. When he is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's enough for me. Ma unzila alayna wa ma unzila ala Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Ya'qub wa al-Asbat. We explained all this in Surah Baqarah. وَمَا أُوْتِيَ مُوسَى وَإِيسَى If you remember, again, we had this point that Allah sometimes has, says أُنْزَلَ sometimes says أُوْتِيَ We said أَنْزَال and إِتَى Here are using the sense of revelation. But إِتَى is more general. إِتَى can be used for other things. Like when Allah gives someone wisdom and not necessarily revelation. إِتَى is more general. Whatever Musa alayhi salam was given, Isa alayhi salam, or one Nabiyun, all the prophets, whatever they received from God, we believe, we accept. La nufarrigu bayna ahadin minhum. We don't make any discrimination against any prophet. Even the prophets that we don't know, we have to believe in them by intention. Out of 124,000 prophets, there are many, many that we don't know. Even the Quran says there are many of them that are lam naqsus. We haven't mentioned their stories. We haven't mentioned their names. But our intention must be, our commitment must be that we believe in whatever was revealed to them. Even if I don't know what was revealed to them and who was <laughs> receiving this revelation, I have to believe in all of them. La nufarrigu bayna ahadin minhum. We don't make any discrimination what is the main thing is that we are submissive to him lahu and this lahu is brought before muslimun for emphasis or perhaps also to show exclusiveness we are only submissive to him nahnu lahu muslimun we are not submitting ourselves to anything and anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, after understanding Islam as this religion of submission, 
Then Allah says, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا It becomes very obvious then. Whoever looks for anything other than Islam, who seeks anything other than Islam, other than submission to God as his religion, as his path of life, فَلَنْ يُقُبَّلَّ مَنْ It will not be accepted from him. The only thing which is acceptable it is submission to God, which is the path of all prophets, and anything other this is not working. It's not that it's a matter of contract or agreement or something you know artificial. It's a reality in the world in which everyone and everything is submissive to Allah. If you want to choose another path, it doesn't work. It will not be accepted because it doesn't work. You cannot gain happiness, salvation without being in harmony with the rest of the world, with the fabric and the nature of this world. And in the hereafter, he will be one of the losers. Of course, this doesn't mean that in dunya he is not one of the losers. Even in dunya he is one of the losers. But the loss in akhirah is the main thing. You know, to be a loser in dunya is very bad. But it's for a short period of time. 50 years, 60 years, 100 years to be in loss is very bad. Even for one day to be in loss is bad. But to be eternally in loss, that is the problem. So, when Allah says, Huwa fil min al He doesn't want to say that in dunya they are okay. No, He wants to emphasize on the fact that they would be eternally, forever in loss, in the hereafter. Even if in dunya they might superficialists have some enjoyment some pleasure some success but even in dunya also they are in loss when allah says Inna al -insan la fi khusr illa amanu wa amilu salat, this is not only khusr in akhirah this is also khusr in dunya then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says كَيْفَ يَحْضِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقٌّ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيَّنَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْضِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ I have a point to make, so please reflect carefully on these two verses. Then I want to make a point and I want to see whether you agree or not. كَيْفَ يَحْضِ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَالشَّهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقْ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to guide some people that after their faith, after they believed, then they changed. As we said, Iman must continue. But these people kafaru ba'da imanim. They first had faith in God and then they changed. How? Some people may think it means that they believed in Islam, for example, and the Prophet Muhammad, then later they didn't believe. No, I think it's more general. They believed in God. It means that they were submissive to God. But when the Prophet Muhammad came and they had to continue submitting to God, from that point they didn't submit to God. This is kuf after Iman. Not kuf after Iman in the message of the Prophet Muhammad. Maybe they didn't believe in the message of the Prophet Muhammad at any time. But up to today, they were mu'min. Today there was a test. Now they refuse to submit themselves to God. They say, maybe not directly and you know clearly, but implicitly they say to Allah we were submitting to you as long as you were asking us to follow our own prophet now you are asking us to believe in this prophet new prophet we are not happy with this 
So, I believe that the meaning of kafaru ba'da imanihim means kafaru with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with respect to submission to Allah, with respect to the religion of Islam, which is submission. Not iman to this, about this particular prophet. وَشَّهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ and also the reason that they didn't submit to the Allah with respect to this prophet is not because they didn't know. They didn't have enough evidence. They knew that he is sent by God. So if they were still submissive to God, they had to accept this prophet. Because truth is clear for them. If someone has not enough evidence okay he can continue studying research and as long as he needs to make research he's excused he can still be mu'min no problem but allah is talking about the people that shahidu anna rasul haq wajaahumul bayyinat miracles some very clear manifest signs of god have come and they don't believe why they don't believe? Do they have any problem with this particular person? Maybe yes, maybe not. The main problem is that they don't have total submission to God. If they had total submission to God, this person was not important for them. They would have said, we believe in him no matter who he is. Now, still I haven't made my uh, main point. <laughs> My main point is coming. Wallahu la yahd al qawm al zalimin. Allah subhanahu wa taala is not guiding the unjust people. Once I had a discussion. I think some of the brothers, maybe who are here, also were there, about the people who would have the least chance of guidance. Who are the people who would have the least chance of guidance? And I said, in my understanding. Zulm is one of the greatest barriers for guidance. Those who are zalim, they do zulm to people or they do zulm to truth. The chance of guidance for them is very little. You can be kafir, you can be mushrik and be guided. But to be zalim and kafir, it makes it very difficult then to be able to believe in God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu la yahdil qawm al-zalimeen. Those who are unjust, those who do zulm. And in this particular case, zulm is to stand against obvious truth. This is zulm. You are doing zulm to yourself. You are doing zulm to that message. You are doing zulm to rest of people. Because when you don't believe in this, you are giving signal to other people that you must not believe. And you know, they always went even more. They actually started stopping people, torturing people, punishing people if they wanted to believe. They didn't keep just silent. Just to be silent is not acceptable. When you see the truth, you cannot be silent. You have to accept and be a witness. But they didn't even keep silent. They opposed and they asked people not to believe. And they started troubling them, torturing them, killing them, imprisoning them. So this is a great zulm. Then when someone is doing zulm, how can he expect to be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So guidance would not be given to these people. Of course, as you know, this is the extra guidance. Because guidance in the sense of presentation of the truth has already been given. Guide has come to them. Message has come, come to them. So the first act of guidance has already taken place. But guidance in the sense of actually taking someone to the destination, Isal al al-matloob, that one has not taken place. So please bear with me. Ula'ika jaza'uhum the reward, the result, the outcome 
of this behavior is what? Is that Allah's and angels and all people's cursing would be on them. This is very powerful. Allah's cursing is with them. Angels also definitely follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's impossible that someone is cursed by Allah, then the angel says, he's a nice man. Let us pray for him. If someone is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the angels also would not like that person. But Allah says, Vannas ajma'in and all people. You have to think about it. What does it mean that all people also would curse them? Does it mean that all people, including kuffar, curse them? Or it means a special type of people. This annas is referring to particular group of people. This alif and lam is for ad or is for all people. Perhaps it means, this is my uh, humble opinion, maybe I'm right. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say that when someone is denying the truth after it has become obvious, then the whole truth, the whole reality, the whole world of existence would be against him. This includes Allah, this includes angels, this includes all people, not in the way that they may understand. As creatures of Allah. Because we are all creatures of Allah. If someone is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even kuffar from existential aspect, they would be against him. They cannot be nice and kind with that person. Maybe they don't understand. If someone is disobeying Allah and declaring war against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even kuffar unconsciously would work against him. It's a very important point. Maybe when it comes to the, their conscious behavior, they want to support him. But when it goes to their unconscious level, they would work against him. Indeed, when they want to help him, they are working against him. They cannot help anyone against Allah's will. This is, you know, ironic. When bad people support someone, indeed they are harming him. You know, it's like, for example, if a car is coming in front of me, okay, with a speed, and then you want to help me by pushing me against that car, the more a speed you give me, the more I will be harmed. Because there is no way for me to resist against that fast car which is coming from before. It's coming from in front of me. So if you push me, you are maximizing the speed and therefore you are maximizing my harm. So if people push you against truth, against hack, they are harming you more. They are troubling you more. If people leave you, it's better than supporting you in this way. When people support sinful people, they are troubling them even more. So, if someone stands against the truth deliberately, after it has become clear, then Allah's curse would be on him. Therefore, he would not be able to be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the second type of guidance and everything would work against him. But what is beautiful, and inshallah it comes after two verses, is that even such people, they can change. 
So this curse of Allah is not ultimate curse because if there is ultimate curse they can never come back but this curse is to be deprived from additional guidance but they can change their situation and then Allah would accept because after two verses Allah says Allah says these are going to be in hell forever so it means that that curse is not fixed as long as they are in that position of denying the truth deliberately they are not receiving further guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything would work against them but still Allah gives them the chance to repent so by repentance you can release yourself even from curse this is very powerful by even uh, sorry by repentance you can release yourself even from curse and we actually see this in history there were people who didn't believe in the prophet muhammad sallallahu although they knew that he is true some of them even took part in the battles against islam but later they embrace Islam. If everyone by denying the truth and rejecting the truth had to remain in the state of Ko forever, then many of the Muslims at that time could not become a Muslim. So sometimes even the people who are standing against the truth deliberately they can change another example is Pharaoh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says maybe even Pharaoh remembers becomes humble this shows rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how forgiving he is that he lets people who have deliberately fought against the truth to come back and he welcomes them back so as long as people want to change into better allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would welcome them back even if they are like pharaoh even if they are like namrud even if they are like many leaders of Quraysh that some of them changed some of them didn't change but some of them changed inshallah we continue this discussion inshallah after uh, inshallah ashura may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand the message of the quran the message of wisdom peace healing and wisdom may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be among true followers of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ahlul bayt alayhi wasallam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins and mistakes may allah keep us and our children always on the right path may allah give healing and shifa to all the people who are ill may allah especially give healing to us for our spiritual illnesses and disease that we have may allah give rahma to all mu'mineen who have passed away especially our parents for parents our teachers our ulama our maraja may allah give them unlimited rahma and let them to be muhammad and ali muhammad and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor our generation to be the generation that would pave the way for imam mahdi al jalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif to come and enable us to serve our imam before and after he comes and may allah make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin